You're looking at Humboldt High School as TSB Television continues its coverage of high school girls basketball. Tonight we present a non-conference game from St. Paul's West Side as the Humboldt Hawks host the St. Croix Preparatory Academy Lions. I'm Mike Peden. Thank you for joining us. Humboldt comes in with a record at 4-1. St. Croix Prep comes in with a record at 1-4. The Lions won their first game of the season earlier this week, and Humboldt suffered their only loss of the year to Minnehaha Academy, and that was an eight-point defeat, 78-70. Players to watch for in Humboldt skates. It's no secret, Lachey Holt, the anchor of this team. Fifth in the state in scoring at 29.2 points per game. She is second in the state for steals. Some incredible numbers. And she's not far behind from taking the lead. St. Croix Prep doesn't have anyone close to Lachey Holt's level on the stat category. But keep an eye on the sophomore center, Grace Catter Henry. She leads the team in scoring at 11.8 points per game, also leads the team in rebounding at 8.5. And overall for St. Croix Prep, this is, continues their learning experience, which began a year ago. St. Croix Prep established their girls' basketball program at this time last season, finished 13 and 13, and won a section round. They're looking to build off of that momentum. Humboldt also 13 and 13, but were eliminated in the first round of their sections. Let's take a quick look at the starting lineups for Humboldt. It's going to be Shashia Keese, number three, number 13, Santana Castillo, number 21, Haley Green, number 33, Danielle Hernandez, and number 45, Lachey Holt. And for the visiting team, St. Croix Prep, number two, Emily Walsh will start, along with Lita Schollmeyer, number three, Rose Catter Henry, number 21, Marissa Light, number 22, if the name sounds familiar, she is the younger sister of Katya Light, the Park of Cottage Grove standout, and Grace Catter Henry, number 55. Humboldt will wear the black jerseys, St. Croix Prep will wear the white jerseys, and for Humboldt, they've been hanging around that 500 mark for a few years now. They've not been able to get past the edge, though. They got close a couple of times in section playoffs, but just haven't had the full complement that they would like in order to get to state. And they have some capable players And St. Corey Prep. I spoke with their coach, Ken Schulmeyer. He said it's just a continuing of the syllabus established last year. Most of the players on St. Corey Prep are freshmen, a couple are sophomores. So it's a very young team. Humboldt with the first possession. And here's Lachey Holt. She's gonna do a lot of work on offense. Missed from three points. And rebound to St. Corey Prep. I'm calling and running camera tonight, so getting the names down may take a little longer than usual, but we'll do our best. That's number two, Emily Walsh with the ball. And there's Grace Catter Henry, who we talked about in the open. Off the heel, no good, and it's picked up by 21, Haley Green. Lachey Holt open down court, and she will go to the free throw line. Lachey Holt. Not the best of free throw shooters. Just a little above 50%. 59.5 to be precise, but she gets the first one here. We mentioned sec fifth in the state in scoring 29.2 points per game, 10.2 rebounds per game. Those numbers have trailed a little bit. Holt gets both here because Humboldt 
They've been in so many blowouts as of late. Uh, Paul Richardson, the head coach, doesn't need to use his starters as aggressively, so her numbers will not be as explosive in nights where she doesn't have to play all 36 minutes. Here's Emily Walsh. And scramble for the ball. It's picked up by Lachey Holt. We mentioned second in the state in steals at 8.4 a game. Kind of a hidden talent of hers. Jumper no good. She gets her own rebound though. And that allows number 33, Danielle Hernandez, to get the second chance basket. And she was a game time decision, dealing with an angle injury, but deemed well enough to play. And Lachey Holt's gonna be called for her first personal foul. Actually, no, it was just off of Humboldt. I thought Shea made contact, but officials say otherwise, so no foul there, but Lions do have the ball. Emily Walsh tried to bounce it over to number 21, Rose Catter Henry, but St. Croix Prep loses the ball. Humboldt won the conference championship a couple of years ago in an upset win over St. Paul Central. Rose Catter Henry with the rebound. And ball goes right to Danielle Hernandez. Humboldt up 4 0. Holt wants to make it 7 0. Still isn't found a three point range. And from that distance coming into this game, just 31% from the three point line. Not the best of shooters at the forward position. You do see that more often now, the power forwards with long distance shooting to extend their ability. But some have that form a little more than others. And we've got a foul. It will be charged to, it looks like Santana Castillo, number 13. Yes. Walsh to inbound. Looking for Grace Scatter Henry and St. Croix Prep can't save the ball in time. There's Shea Shea Keese. Her full name is Tirasha, but she goes by Shea Shea. And so that's what we'll use for the broadcast. But no nicknames needed for Danielle Hernandez, who has scored four points. Humboldt with a six nothing lead. Playing a little bit of defense here. It's Catter Henry again. Walsh losing the ball. Haley Green gets control but can't put it down. No put back. And a foul is called. That's going to send Lachey Holt to the line again. She has yet to make a field goal. Made her first two free throws. Steals a game, as we mentioned. That's good for second in the state. Number one in that category. A little tough to tell because stat keeping isn't that uniform, but it's Tia Shara Christian. And 9.6. And Lachey Holt gets the steal. Can she get a first field goal here? Yes, she will. And that brings her point total up to six. And St. Croix Prep will call timeout. Ken Schollmeyer wanting to control his team as Humboldt has scored the first 10 points of this game. 14.52 remaining in the first half. And according to the public address announcer on Saturday, the Humboldt girls team will be taking part in a food shelf drive on Saturday. They will come in and shoot 100 free throws each. And if you look at the numbers, it might take a little while for them to get up there. Holt at 59.5, their top free throw shooter, Haley Green, at 60%. So uh, they might have to be a little patient to get to that 100 mark, but it's for a good cause. And St. Croix Prep taking part in charitable causes of their own. We'll talk more about that throughout the broadcast. There's Marissa Like getting her first touch. We mentioned the younger sister of Katya Like, and a steal. 
No basket though for Alicia Deloy, but there's Lachey Holt doing some cleanup work. She's up to eight points. Another steal by Deboy. No good. Offensive rebound, Haley Green. And she cleans up the mess. And Humboldt doing a lot of damage early. 14-0. And Lachey Holt is going to get called for the reach-in. That's Lita Schollmeyer, number three. And we haven't mentioned St. Croix Prep's names too much because they haven't been able to get much on offense yet. But we've seen teams get to hot starts before, before the other team gets on a counter run. One of the old analogies of basketball. There's Emily Walsh again. And Humboldt just swarming whoever touches the ball for St. Croix Prep. But they leave Marissa Like open, but she can't get the Lions on the board. Gets her own rebound though. Schollmeyer will try, too strong. And it's picked up by Shea Sheakis. A keys, no. And it was off of Humboldt, so we're going in St. Croix's direction. St. Croix prep not to be confused with St. Croix Lutheran. Out in Stillwater. Schollmeyer losing the ball at Keyes with another steal. Shea Shea tried to get it to Shea. That's what Colt prefers to call herself. It will stay with Humboldt though. And Shea Holt still can't find the three-pointer. But Haley Green with the offensive rebound, and she gets the friendly bounce. Humboldt up 16-0. Humboldt not respected in too many of the preseason rankings, but have built up a nice start here. Lachey Holt with another steal, and she's got an open basket. Goodbye. That brings her up to 10. Ten points in just over five minutes of play. And Ken Schollmeyer will call another timeout as his Lions continue to be flustered. Well, while they be flustered for this game, in the confines of Stillwater where they're located, not as much. In fact, all the varsity players participate in coaching clinics for the younger programs. The Varsity kids, as we mentioned, they will help the K through five and six through seven groups to get them acclimated to the sport of basketball. And it's something Ken Schollmeyer takes a lot of pride in because he says it helps reinforce the fundamentals that he tries to pass on to his players. As we mentioned, still a new program. This is only their second season as a girls basketball program. So wins and losses at this point are not a primary concern for the Lions. They're all about just learning the game, just having fun, learning a few things, and getting as comfortable as possible before they get to state. And Ken Schollmeyer told me one thing they did this year to help them in those preparations was upgrade the schedule. So he classed up, including Humboldt, which is a 2A school. Got a few 3A schools, maybe a 4A school, I think in there, so that might not lead to a lot of wins for St. Croix Prep, but it will give them the testing and the guidance they need down the road. And with all these young players on St. Croix Prep's team, it's going to give them a lot of experience later on. Last week, we profiled Chanhassen and their path to ascendance. And St. Croix Prep looking at a similar situation. We talked about Chan Hassan. They were 8 and 17 their first season. Lachey Holt couldn't save it in time. 
and St. Croix Prep off to a good start. Last year, 13 and 13. And so even if they get a couple of wins better, it's something to build on. Again, we mentioned a lot of freshmen on this team, so they are going to have a lot of time to play with each other, and that experience will prove fruitful down the road. Walsh, no. And a reach in, or over the back call, I should say, on Santana Castillo. That's her second personal foul. And Holt's gonna sit for a little while. New player in for Humboldt. Oh. We'll get to that in a moment, but first we need to point out Lita Schoenmeyer getting St. Croix Prep on the board. And that ends the 18-point run that Humboldt put up to start this game. And that's Deloitte. Deloy, I should say, she can't get it. Jump ball and the possession arrow favors St. Croix Prep. In the game for the Hawks, number 11, Ravon Gentry. She's a 5'6 senior guard. And the reason why Holt is sitting for a little while, I spoke with Paul Richardson, the head coach beforehand. He said, Holt puts so much energy and so much effort into every possession. We have a carrying violation on like that. Holt has to sit for a while because she just runs out of breath. Some players, oh, like Providence Academy, they don't sub out often because they can control themselves and they direct their energy and just kind of save it for the end of the game, but their tempo also allows them to conserve. Lachey Holt, a motor that is always running. Humboldt still running. That was Ravon Gentry on the score. It's 20 to two in favor of the Hawks. Walsh used up the dribble. Now Schollmeyer for three. Can't get it off the backboard and the rebound to Haley Green. Hernandez top of the key, off the heel. Jump ball, it will stay with Humble. Shea Shea Akis and Lachey Holt going back in for the Hawks. Holt not giving up from three point range, but still can't hit it. And the rebound by Rose Catter Henry. Claudia Schultz in the game now for St. Croix Prep. She's wearing number 33, tries to get it to Grace Catter Henry, but she loses the ball. And Humboldt with numbers again. Ravon Gentry, short. Holt picks it up, but too strong. That has happened with Lachey from time to time. Again, a motor that's always running, but she can come up with fine plays like that, and she'll go to the line again, already racking up several steals. A defensive coach's dream, in the words of Paul Richardson, and he is a very energetic coach. And was very admirable, very proud of a gesture an opposing coach of his made. We mentioned Lachey crossed 1,000 points at Minnehaha Academy. And when they found out about that, he went over to Josh Thoreau, the head coach over there, and asked to get some stoppage to recognize the achievement because they were on the road. And so Josh Thoreau, in a close situation, opted to use one of his timeouts so that Lachey Holt could get the recognition she deserved for getting four digits to her name. And she has gone to the free throw line with considerable frequency. She is four of six. on Schultz, her first. Grace Catter henry has two fouls, and Lachey Holt will try to add to her 10 points. <laughs> she
She is six of eight. That gives her a dozen on the night. And we still have nine minutes left and change in the first half. Jump ball. St. Croix Prep keeps it. And as the, we've seen, just Humboldt all over on St. Croix Prep's defense. Paul Richardson likes to do that, put a little pressure on them. Grace Catter Henry gets her own rebound, and she'll go to the free throw line. St. Croix Prep hasn't been on the receiving end of many high scoring games. Fouls on Haley Green, her first personal. Catter Henry 50% from the free throw line based on the numbers we have. Comes up empty here and so St. Croix Prep still stuck at two points. Shea Shea Keys over to Haley Green. That gets tipped up and loose ball goes to St. Croix Prep. Again, the game not over. A lot of crazy things could happen. It's got to get open and they got to finish the layups there. Rose Catter Henry couldn't put it down. Humboldt on the push now and Akees will get a three point play opportunity. Akees, 12.6 points per game, just 48% from the free throw line though. But Paul Richardson. Really admired her work ethic over the summer. Likened her to a Robert Smith, the running back for the Minnesota Vikings and the way she just runs north and south, not much east-west. She completes a three-point play and Humboldt's up 25 to two. The Shea Holt on the steal and she's got a one-on-one. -on -one. She's gonna beat Marissa Like and score. And that's and just trots back to her defensive assignment. That might be the slowest we see Lachey Holt run throughout this game. Lachey Holt draws another foul, and St. Croix Prep out of fouls to give. So Lachey Holt getting a lot of action. And you have to imagine in games where she will be needed more often, she would have the potential to score 40 points or more. She's shooting very well from the free throw line tonight. Her season high is 38. And that was the first game of the year. Since then, her numbers have trailed off. But again, she hasn't been needed. But she is an impressive 8 of 10 from the free throw line. And the Humboldt roster, they don't seem to mind having an anchor in their offense. Haley Green putting in a pair. It's 31 to two in favor of Humboldt. And this game quickly turning into a domination. Shoulder over to Catter Henry and that doesn't come up short. Like can't clean it up. And scramble for the ball. And Lachey Holt gonna run a little point. She finds Hernandez open down court. And Hernandez with the drive to the lane. And she had a bad ankle too. Green with the steal. Holt and one. And if my calculation is correct, that's 20 points already for the senior forward. And she's eight of 10 from the free throw line. New player in for the Hawks, Keandra Stokes, number 41. She's a six foot sophomore center and Lachey Holt completes the three point play and she's already matched her point total from the blowout win over Henry Sibley on Tuesday. What a game for Lachey Holt. If you're St. Croix prep, you just have to be in awe right now of what Humboldt has done, but still a lot of time left one position at a time. Jump ball, Humboldt with the possession arrow. Ooh, 
We mentioned the youth clinics that the varsity team helps run, the youth program that they have, which should help mold and develop talent for St. Croix Prep in the years to come, is called Lady Lion Junior Pride. Paul pump fakes a three. That's about the only shot that hasn't fallen for her tonight. But other players are certainly taking a shot at it. That was Elizabeth McDonough on the try. And Emily Walsh doesn't have much help, and she's got Holt, who's trying to poke it away. Remember, there is a 10-second rule, and Walsh will get across before that lapses. But Holt making it miserable on defense. a block for Keandra Stokes rejecting Rose Catter Henry. Walsh to inbound. Deflected and into the hands of Deloy. And that was a low arcing three that came up too strong. Oh, Lachey Holt is short. She hasn't missed many shots tonight, but came up empty that time. Here's another steal and another breakaway try. There's a high percentage shot for Lachey Holt. And it's 38 to two. Not a misprint. Catter Henry out to Schultz. And Catter Henry will try, and she can't get the bounce. And that's got to be frustrating for St. Croix Prep. They have had a few good looks come their way, but they just came up short. Lachey Holt gets double team now. She's at 23. And Deloy short on the jumper, rebound McDonough. And a foul is called against Humble. St. Croix Prep in the penalty. Humble with one foul left to give. Lachey Holt will take another breather. We've been mentioning her name a lot, but there are some other players. <laughs> on Humboldt's team, and once in a while they get their action in, but again, you don't see a lot of animosity on court with Humboldt and their one-person offense. And St. Croix Prep, again, still learning. That's what Ken Schulmeyer was most enthusiastic about and most optimistic about. Getting to be a part of a startup program, plugging into a business, you're gonna have some bumps along the way. It's not gonna be easy. You're gonna have some blowouts. There will be nights like tonight where you have trouble just getting on the board. But it's all about big picture for St. Croix Prep. And again, a lot of freshmen on the team. They'll only become sophomores next year. And there are a lot of things to look forward to as the program builds up. Back in the game for the Hawks. Emily Walsh. Over to Marissa Like. Her older sister Katia went to Nebraska for a little while, but decided to leave the program. It was before they moved to the Big Ten. But uh, this would have been her last year. Here's Shea Shea Akis and Akis. Can't get a kiss off the glass. She gets her own rebound, but threw it up there. And you see that a lot in high school basketball. Players so eager to get that second chance shot off, they don't get a clean one. Haley Green on the rebound. And we're going the other way. A lot of running back and forth here. And Green gets a kiss off the glass. Like over to Schollmeyer, Walsh for three. They can't buy a basket. Gentry 
on the rebound. Eight gets the three. No. We haven't seen many threes go in tonight. Schollmeyer finds Marissa Light down court. Yikes. This is just not St. Croix Prep's night. St. Croix Prep, a Class A school. Green is blocked. And Grace Catter Henry picks it up. And she is fouled. And if I'm correct, and I usually am, Humboldt now in the penalty. So it's a one-on-one -on -one situation here for the St. Croix Prep Lions. And there's another look at Grace Catter Henry, number 55. The 6'2 sophomore center, a developing post player, in the words of Kent Schollmeyer. Not shy about playing posts that are older and perhaps a little more experienced than her. And that's what you need if you're St. Croix Prep, just a willingness to learn. The school hasn't been around for that long. They established in 2004. Ravon Gentry can't get it off the backboard, but the offensive rebound to Danielle Hernandez. Here's Lachey Holt. No. Fight for the rebound, and Danielle Hernandez with a little behind the back layup. St. Croix Prep, established in 2004, did not have the first graduating class until 2009. So still a, a young school and just building a lot of traditions, and similar to Chanhassen and Eastridge. We have just over two minutes to play in the first half. And Gentry off target for three-point range. Marissa Light picks up the ball. It's deflected off of St. Croix Prep, so we're going Humboldt's direction. Akis over to Gentry. Akis for three. Bullseye. All five foot three inches. And a sophomore, so has more time to build that work ethic. Here's another steal and another open layup for Lachey Holt. She's had a few breakaway layups tonight. And I've run out of adjectives to describe what Lachey Holt can do with defense. And there's another deflection. And she's got Schultz trapped up and forces the jump ball, but that's about it. 107 left. And Humboldt up 47 to two. Hernandez with the block. Akis will pull up off the heel this time. Less than a minute to go. And that's Lachey Hole trying another steal. a basket for St. Croix Prep and that's got to feel got to leave them feeling a little better and they've had some good possessions and had a few good looks they just aren't falling and a lot of shots falling right now for the Hawks as we see Elizabeth McDonough back in and that's an example of what I'm talking about I believe that was Santana Castillo on the putback just know this, they're up 49-4. Uh, no good from Rose Catter Henry. And the ball is picked up by Castillo. And oh no, half court buzzer beater for Humboldt, but they've done just about everything else. They have a 49-4 lead at halftime and a 
One of the most dominant first halves I have ever seen in a high school basketball game. Will Humboldt be able to continue that performance in the second half? We'll find out. We'll pause for a few minutes and go over the numbers. You're watching High School Girls Basketball on TSB Television. Welcome back to High School Girls Basketball on TSB Television. I'm Mike Needon and I am presenting and taping this high school girls basketball game between the Humboldt Hawks and the St. Croix Preparatory Academy Lions. We come out of halftime with Humboldt leading 49-4 and all indications suggest they'll move to 5-1 on the season. And leading that charge was 25 points from Lachey Holtz, more than half of the team scoring. Danielle Hernandez had 10 and Haley Green added 8. Uh, and that sums up the notables. Uh, just long story short, it's a very dominant game for the Humboldt Hawks. And St. Croix Prep, it's just about one possession at a time. I'm not sure if they will come back to win this game, but again, it's a long season. They knew they were gonna get some challenges when they classed up this year in their schedule to play some tougher teams. He had Ken Schollmeyer, when I talked to him pregame, had nothing but positive words to say for Humboldt, and so we're probably not gonna see the Humboldt starters in there too often unless we get a uh, considerable comeback here from St. Croix Prep, but we'll see what the second half shakes up. There's Marissa Like, and that goes off the foot of Lachey Holtz. Ken Schulmeyer was hoping his team would hold it down and stay close, but uh, that hasn't happened yet. But again, this is about big picture thinking, and not just for this season, but for the program overall. Daniel Hernandez on the rebound. And the Shea Holt shook her defender and didn't even have to move too much to do it. Just hit the brakes and then watched her defender slip by. There's Danielle Hernandez on the nice block for the score. Coming off the block, I should say. That gives her a dozen. Grace Catter Henry, too strong. And we, as I mentioned before, St. Croix Prep, they've had a few good looks. It's just that it doesn't help that their shooting percentage has been off as well. While Humboldt is on fire, or as they say in Spanish, en fuego. Of course, Humboldt, known for a lot of Spanish-speaking residents in the area. It's the home of the Cinco de Mayo Festival. And speaking of activity, Humboldt had a lot of it going on tonight. There's Lachey Holt shaking her defender, getting the kiss off the glass. That brings her up to 27 points. It's gonna be another solid night for her in that department. As we mentioned, fifth in the state in scoring and a traveling violation on St. Croix Prep. Humboldt hosted their conferences tonight. So, for Paul Richardson, that meant a busy evening having to conduct conferences with the parents of the students he teaches. He's an English teacher here at Humboldt High School and then having to go and coach his basketball team. But that's actually quite common in high school basketball. The coaches often take part in other roles at the school, whether it's teaching in the form of an aide, assistant. It's not completely linear, but it helps build that identity between coach and athlete. New player in for Humboldt, number 25, Selena Seals. And scoring was Haley Green.
57 to 4 is the score. And Haley Green now up to double digits. And there's Lachey Holtz and can't get the four point play, at least she won't be able to. Well, so we had the chance to add to her total from the free throw line, where she is nine of 11. But Humboldt, just the better team tonight. They were on top, just really in focus tonight. A rare miss from Lachey Hold, as we mentioned, came into this game just shooting 60% from the free throw line. Right now at 75. Twenty-eight points. She may have thirty before we're through. For Humboldt, though, it's a positive sign. You know, they're beating teams that they would be expected to beat on the schedule. There's Lachey Holt. Uh, was a little too fancy there in a the spin move, and it leads to a Humboldt turnover. Grace Catter Henry, uh, she needed that basket, and she needed it badly just for her own morale. And she had a lot of looks tonight that just weren't falling, and so that should give her some confidence back. Here's a three-pointer from Humboldt that calls short, and look at Lachey Holt; she can't get the reach. Uh, let's see what happens here. Grace Catter Henry again. Well, can't make it two in a row. It's 58 to six in favor of the Hawks. Here's Seals. Akis for three. Off the glass and in. Akis has hit a couple of those. I have not seen too many games play out like this. But here's a three-point play opportunity for Lita Schulmeyer, and again for St. Croix Prep, it's not about winning or losing right now. As we mentioned, they are a solid team. They had a solid mark last year, 13 and 13, and we might have seen the last of folks like Holt and Green and Akis, as Richardson will sub them out, but we'll see. It's 13.57 left, and Schulmeyer completes a three-point play. With well, a team as young as they are, you need to build the foundation. And so you're not going to be focused on wins and losses, especially here. We've talked about it many times. In the playoffs, every team makes it. So everyone reset to 0 0. And St. Croix Prep did win one last year, so they do have something to build on. Catter Henry gets the offensive rebound and the putback. She's getting a couple of those now, and well, that should give her a little bit of confidence, as we mentioned. She's not afraid to play against some of the older and more experienced bigs in basketball, but still learning, still developing. And she completes a three-point play, and her free throw shooting has gone up as of late. A positive trend, as noted by Kent Schulmeyer. So let's see what Humboldt does here. Again, they will move to five and one. That is essentially a guarantee at this point. Being a little more passive with the ball now. And number 35, Sierra Mendez can't get the shot in. So we may not see as many points from Humboldt, but again, they did exactly what they needed to do, so they could stop where they are and probably be fine with it. Catter Henry can't get the shot off, and it will go back to Humboldt on the dead ball rebound. Well, Holt with 28 points. Made most of her field goals tonight, which will help those numbers a bit. And again, it's good to see this kind 
of game from a team that has hovered around the 500 mark for the last few years. Had the one conference title, was their first in school history when they played Roosevelt and Hernandez can't get the roll and the rebound goes to 21. That's uh, Rose Catter, Catter Henry. I haven't mentioned their names in a while, but they haven't scored a whole lot. But they had a few more points in this half. Catter Henry deflected. Dead ball rebound to St. Croix Prep. Paul Richardson looking at his watch. And now he's gonna get ready to send in the other Humboldt reserves. This is good experience for them as well. Deloy can't put it in. And this is what we might see for the remaining 11 minutes and 22 seconds. Three-pointer from Schollmeyer is too strong. Grace Ketter Henry with an offensive rebound and she gets a spin move to fall. So Catter Henry getting a few points for the Lions and that's good to see and Deloy's three-pointer had no arc and it came up short. St. Croix Prep would need a few more points to prevent the mercy rule from being put into effect. And a three-pointer from Marissa Like. Well, we may be getting in that direction. He might have, Paul Richardson might have to put his starters back in for a little bit just to close it out. And there's another steal by Rose Catter Henry. Traveling violation in Emily Walsh, but say what you will about the personnel in there. It is worth noting that St. Croix Prep has scored the last 11 points. And Paul Richardson gonna put his starters in one more time just to keep things under control. But again, in this situation, you put your reserves out there early and it's not something a lot of coaches do to make sure or to get them some experience and to have them test it out. Well, that'll give Lachey Holt more chances to pad her numbers. And her rebounding, her steals, and I don't know what <laughs> she needs to improve on. But there you saw getting a steal, a couple of rebounds there, and it's gonna be a big night on the stat sheet for Lachey Holt. She is 10 of 13 from the free throw line, 28 points. I don't even know how many rebounds or steals she has because uh, we don't have that technology here. But she is going to have a very nice stat sheet. When she... looks at tomorrow's paper or goes online, since that's what most of the schools do. And adds another, 29 points. And that ends the 11 nothing run from St. Croix Prep. But again, even little things. That St. Croix Prep can do well will certainly be appreciated. And Lita Schollmeyer couldn't get the fade away. Grace Catter Henry with the put back and a solid second half for the sophomore center. Couldn't get anything to fall in the first and that really was one of the differences here. Green and no, Catter Henry with the rebound. All right, we're within mercy rule range now, so the clock should start running for the remainder of this game, and Lachey Holt fouls, and true to form, the clock did, has not stopped, so we will be out of here shortly. Nice backdoor cut off the inbound to Grace Catter-Henry, and 
I don't know what the final numbers are going to be, but St. Croix Prep has to be feeling really good right now about what they've done and who scored there. I can't, couldn't tell from up here, but that might have been hold if it was. She, that puts her past 30. And there's another steal. Traveling violation. And here comes Akis. And Lachey Holt will stay. Nope, she's going out. She doesn't need. She doesn't need to do any more. Still a 15-3 run for the St. Croix Prep Lions. Now Humble, of course, had that giant run to open the game, but. You gotta like that St. Croix Prep is still working on every possession because they know they only have so many chances before the section playoffs begin and Rayvon Gentry can't get it off the heel. And Catter Henry, a nice game from her. I mean, getting some rebounds, getting some points. And as we mentioned, just not afraid to challenge her opponents. And you've seen that in this game. She's working hard. I mean, the shots just haven't been falling for her, but... For those of you watching on the Lady Lion Junior Pride Club or anyone else in St. Croix Prep's fan base, you really should take some notes from what Grace Catter Henry has done tonight. And that's an anchor to build on. Again, she's a sophomore, so you've got her for a couple more years. Too strong. Rebound going to 35, Sierra Mendez. Hey, down in front. Seals, bounce over, and Mendez, Akis is blocked. And the steal by Lita Schollmeyer. Marissa Leik. And a nice bounce pass, but a little too strong for most Catter Henry. And the rebound to, by Selena Seals. Seals a 5'5 junior guard. A couple of other players we haven't mentioned. Danielle Hernandez, she had a strong first half. Playing limited minutes tonight with, again, playing off a sore ankle. There's Haley Green. Gentry. Not the best of forms there. There's Akis, who will shoot a pair. But I want to get this in since we are in running time. Danielle Hernandez described as a catalyst, a good passer that can move the ball for Humboldt, and also Haley Green, who is still on the floor for the Hawks. Has some good post moves, a good ball handler, and as Paul Richardson put it, can run those Kevin Love type outlets. Shea Shea Akis at the line. She's at a couple of threes. Here's Hernandez in again. And we also see Kendra Stokes. Less than five minutes to play. And Akis, I believe, has crossed double digits as well. That should be 64-21, and it is on the scoreboard. Like over to Catter Henry. Grace has been heavily involved tonight, and Rose Catter Henry, uh, that goes out of bounds. <laughs> Hernandez on the offensive rebound. Mendez will line up a three. That's short. And that ball nearly hit my tripod. I have not had much luck with that lately. And here's a close up of Marissa Like. Again, I'm kind of a new experience for me, too. We're talking about learning and growing and developing and 
getting the fundamentals down. This is the first time I've taped a game and called it at the same time. Bullseye, Lita Schollmeyer. That run I've been talking about in the second half is now 18 to four. But there's no question, Humboldt came ready to play. And they may not have the most talented of rosters, but Paul Richardson and his enthusiasm is reflecting in his group. Look out. In this uh, format that I've been doing, calling and shooting camera at the same time and not something I want to continue on a long-term basis, but proving effective tonight. Green over to Deloy and has not found her shot tonight. Stokes can't get the bounce pass and there's a scramble for the ball and it's picked up by St. Croix Prep and let's see if they can add a little more. New player in, number 30. We'll get her name for you in a minute. But the runner by Schollmeyer. So a couple of baskets for her, and Humboldt can't counter with the three-pointer. Mendez is fouled. Not the team's in the bonus as it is. And Schollmeyer, we haven't talked about her yet, but Ken Schollmeyer mentioned that she moved from the point to the shooting guard this year and learning from these pressure defenses. Number 30 is Mallory Boychik for St. Croix Prep and Humboldt throws it away. So players like Lita Schollmeyer, Grace Catter Henry, they're learning. They have a, some positives to build on, but as you see in tonight's game, they still have a lot of work to do. But again, they are freshmen and not many freshmen would be playing this many minutes on the varsity roster, at least the cluster of them that St. Croix Prep has. On their roster, six officially are listed as freshmen and two are sophomores. A very young team, but as we mentioned, schools like Chanhassen and Eastridge had to go through the same progression where you start out young work through the growing pains before you have a chance to build up a foundation. And that's what St. Croix Prep is all about right now, continuing to build the foundation. This is just their second year in existence as a girls basketball program. They are involved in other sports. Bullseye, Lita Schollmeyer again. A few late points for the freshman. And Humboldt will fire one more off the mark. And Haley Green can't finish it off, but a fine game from Humboldt, even if the second half wasn't a very active one. They only scored 15 points, but they didn't need to do much. They win 64-29. And the players of the game, the players we profiled in the open, Grace Catter Henry for St. Croix Prep and Lachey Hope from Humboldt. And it is worth noting St. Croix Prep ended the game on a 23-4 run. For the period, they outscored Humboldt 25-15. Again, the circumstances would lead you to believe such a trend would occur, but again, a positive for St. Croix Prep to take with them back to Stillwater, and for Humboldt, a solid win. They moved to 5-1 and, and look to be an early force in Class 2A competition. That does it from here. For everyone here at TSB Television, which is uh, just me, myself, and I, I'm Mike Beaton. Thank you for watching.